the living legend Zion Fayaz Qureshi, specialist dentist, teacher, community servant, author, and diplomat. That is the profile we would use to describe our guest on the Living Legends. He is a member of the pioneering dentistry class at the University of Nairobi and later heading the faculty served as a cabinet secretary and had to overcome advances that were against his ethical and moral code and is now kenya's ambassador to belgium luxembourg and the european union on the living legends we hear from ambassador professor jacob kaimeni professor it's an extreme honor welcome to the living legends you are a real living legend and it's an extreme honor to be sharing the same space with you here so let's get rolling and of course um, go back way back we rewind your early life and education at primary and secondary school thank you thank you so much uh, Kureshi, for giving me this opportunity to tell the kenyan people about myself <clears throat> i was born in Ement North constituency in a location called Muradankari way back on the 10th of July 1952 and I want to start the one in 1961 all the way to standard 7 1967 after that I qualified and went to middle school at those days, middle school was amongst the few schools yes. in the entire middle district. And I studied there for about, uh, as usual, for four years. And I qualified to go for my A-levels in the then Kenyatta University, which are the higher secondary school division. How was the setup? of uh, A-levels at the Kenyatta College at that point in time. Uh, how, was the, how, was the, how were the standards? Made? Yes, the standards were extremely high. You'd be surprised to hear that uh, amongst the uh, A-level leavers or the schools, including the alliances of this world, mm -hmm. we used to take literally the entire class from Kenyatta University to go and do medicine. Because our focus basically in Kenyatta University our secondary school division was mainly science, biology, uh, chemistry, physics, and mathematics, mm -hmm. right? For example, in our time, when we, when we finished, in, 19, uh, in 1973, 98% of us went to do medicine and dentistry. So you can imagine. That, is, like a that is a fantastic record. Yes. 98%. 98%. Wow. Specialization in medicine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what was your student experience? Wonderful. And one of the challenges that we had, as you'd expect, eh? yeah. <laughs> when you are pioneer class, mm -hmm. first and foremost, uh, you know, not many people are familiar with the training of dentistry. We had to get some of the medical doctors to go and teach us medical aspects of dentistry. So they, they are not very happy about that. Some of them, I won't say all of them, some of them. Right. I'm saying some are not happy because I remember one moment one of the foreign lecturers walking into a cl class you can't believe it and he was wondering what he was to teach to dentists and I stood up because I was a classroom hmm. I told him you have no business in being here if you do not know why you are here in the first place he changed he became red but thank God because of that he taught from then on he taught very well the other challenge we had was again the medical students feeling the classrooms were theirs. So when there was competition as to who should be where at what time, it, they thought the other ones who should be there, which is not the case in Northern Plains, you see, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of course. But again, we struggled, we fought against that, and it became the norm. So everybody knew where they should be. Are we together? The other most interesting thing was, of course, the competition between, because between ourselves, pharmacy students, because we did similar subjects, right. such as anatomy, mm -hmm. physiology, and biochemistry. We did the same subjects. And you can imagine, therefore, 
when we sat for university exams, there was that question or that query, who is who, who wanna do better than the others? <laughs> Extreme competition. And I can tell you, yeah. uh, yes, either group, anyone will do well. I remember once or twice reading the entire group on a specific subject. And that gives some of us a lot of courage, a lot of encouragement to soldier alone and be very good students, be good dentists in the after. Because, you know, you're all dedicated and the, and you're all competitive striving for the best yes you get the best out of yourself correct and overall I yes guess. yes that's that's exactly what happened so again uh, the other challenge was that uh, you know the uh, once we left of course posting was not easy we had to be posted now all of us to the former Kabete Yameno you remember Kenyatta Yameno that's yes. where we did our internship after the final year exam mm -hmm. That's where we went. We started as a group of about 18 dental students. With one from, I think it was Lesotho. So the others were all from Kenya, basically. Yeah? And it's a wonderful moment. With bright students and all of us made it, basically. How would you describe your first uh, year in real practice? Uh, let me look at it from two perspectives. Mm -hmm. First of all, when you leave the dental school, you employed as an intern. That's the first year. So I, let's, let me talk about first year as an intern. <laughs> as an intern, it is challenging because one, of course, uh, you are supposed now to practice what you have been taught. So and the dental theory school, into practical now. Now theory into practice. Mm -hmm. And remember, you are dealing with very experienced clinicians. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to let them down or let your teachers down. You must demonstrate that you have been trained well. Right? The other thing is that, uh, of course, you are working in a new environment. Mm -hmm. Apart from having all these senior colleagues, you are in a new environment where you have the, all these nurses whom you are not familiar with. And therefore, you, it's a challenge of getting making friends with these people so that you can do well and the other thing is remember when you are in town the, these people are the ones who certify you to be registered by the medical practitioners and dentist council as a dentist subject to your performance therefore you must be able to impress them by way of your behavior you have to be at your best yes at your best in terms of skills competencies and what have you that's my first level. And to me, it was wonderful. Because at Chikabeti Ameno that time, remember most of the people were British trained, of Asian origin. Mm -hmm. We didn't have many whites, but the majority were of Asian origin. And they were wonderful people. We had wonderful time really uh, with those uh, men and women. So my internship by mass, it was very nice, so to speak. And I want to believe I did well because when it came now for us to be posted to, after internship, mm -hmm. to various district hospitals in Kenya, my boss decided that amongst the 18 dentists, it was only me who was to remain at the dental, at the, at the dental school, at the dental clinic. The only other person remained because he and a senior relative was working in the Ministry of Health. Excellent. So you joined the University of Nairobi as a lecturer in 1985. Yes. And rose to the ranks uh, via fellowships to associate professor. Yes. Uh, besides teaching, this appointment comes with research work, obviously. Um, uh, tell us about how our diets, uh, our social behavior, like substance abuse, uh, leads to poor dental health. And uh, what are the recommendations that you would have <coughs> for our viewers? First of all, I would want you to know, to know Kureshi, I rose from a lecturer to senior lecturer, associate professor, and full professor. I was the first full professor of odontology in Kenya and in East Africa. 
I want you to know. So you went through all the ranks, all the, the highest ranks, level. Full professor. There are very few professors pro professors in this country. Full, not associates. Full. Because even when you qualify, when you become a full professor of any university, the first thing that you should do, if you are what you assault, is to present what is called a inaugural lecture which tells which speaks to what the research that you've done mm -hmm. and who you are i was the first dentist to give a new inaugural lecture i don't think anybody else has done it so amongst the few commendable in the university of Nairobi, we have given inaugural lectures so i've done that and to answer your question you know the the the, the mouth is more less than three as you know of the, of the body <laughs> and whatever of pains or happens in the rest of the body can affect the mouth mm. and what you eat or what you hear what you eat can also affect what you eat what you chew and now I'll, I'll give you examples so that you can appreciate and people say if you if you smoke if you chew tobacco or you smoke your mouth smells like a can I'm sorry for those who smoke <laughs> because it's not a good thing. <laughs> your girlfriend may never tell you or your wife <laughs> how they dislike that smell. So I want to tell people, please remember, when you smoke, yeah, it has an effect. Not only your mouth smells like an ashtray. <laughs> yes, and then the other thing which you need to know is that uh, smoking itself also might have some drying effect on your mouth, mm -hmm. apart from all causing oral cancer. That drying effect again has a tendency to encourage bacteria accumulation on the gums and on the teeth. Whose consequences would have told you? You end up with a gum disease. You see what I want to try to say? You might also come from an area where the fluoride level is very high. The Sasawewe, especially from Mambo. That's the fluoride level in, in the water. Yes. If it is beyond, say, for example, you hear is it's supposed to be less than maybe one part per million, but you have some people, they drink water, which is several tens or twenties parts per million. Mm. That water is dangerous. It is dangerous, dangerous for two reasons. Like if you come from areas like Guranga, you come from Kiambu here, where the levels are very high, you can suffer from what is called disabling fluorosis. To the extent that there is deposition of fluoride, on the small spinal cord. You can't even, you can't even walk. Wow. Yeah, it, it can, can be, be a serious problem. Be serious, eh? Apart from that, if your children, as they grow during teeth formation, fluoride is deposited in, in the structure of the tooth. That's why you see some teeth are brown. Yeah? Or fluorotic teeth. And it can be so severe, Kureshi, to the extent that the teeth chip off other than looking very ugly, of course, they chip off. Yeah. And they don't look nice, as you know. You know what I'm trying to say? Yes, yes. And the management of dental fluorosis, it's not easy. And even if you have to say you defluoridate the water, it's virtually impossible. Because the methods used are very expensive. What's the secret of success? Uh, yeah. Well, the, um, the secret, of course, of this success, one is God's grace. Mungu, Baraka Zamungu. And of course, and work and focus it's so, so important to have faith very true faith is the foundation of everything yes it? yes that's where the success comes correct i apply what is called pendid principle in my life so what does pendid that is p e d i d p stands for prayers first and foremost yes e stands for exercise di stands for diet and the other one is discipline you've had such a prolific career now let's take a leap in 2013 first it was all about dentistry now you were appointed the cabinet secretary for education science and technology now let's tell us a little bit about uh, your experience in streamlining examination administration the laptop program challenges and opportunities <laughs> Uh, review of school management structures, ensure universities are academically and economically viable. Uh, this is a very interesting post. 
Let me see. Yes, I hope I can be comprehensive enough to address that issue. First of all, it was a great honor for the president to appoint me as the first governing secretary post the 2010 constitution. Governing secretary for education. The first governing secretaries were supposed to be professionals. Mm. No politicians. Right. And there is merit in that. Because you focus as a professional. No, 100%. In what you are grounded in. And you do it very well. Now, when I went in Kureshi, there was something called Education Act. But it had not been made operational. There was also Universities Act. Both were not made operational. So, and to operationalize them by coming up with the rules and regulations. Some of the very interesting rules, uh, one you remember those days, students were forced to reach, re repeat classes. Yes. Particularly at standard six level. Mm -hmm. You can find a child crying, oh, mom, dad, I don't want to repeat their class at standard six. Yes, because you would get mentally affected Correct. by the whole situation. So we indeed decided as part of the regulations, no child shall be forced to repeat. Repeat. Above standard six, no repetition at all. That's number one. The other thing which I discovered, which was terrible really, is the issue of examinations. People are taught just to memorize what is called road learning just to pass exams yeah you know what i mean cramming not cramming understanding and no understanding but just cramming the whole correct thing. yes yeah to the extent that children are no time to play over the holidays mm. that is why i banned uh, tuition during the holidays unfortunately somebody returned it and i can tell you it's not correct children by their very nature must be given an opportunity courage to be who they should be to play again um, in his wisdom the president decided to move me from minister of education minister of lands bearing in mind that uh, there are law, so many laws to be implemented in the minister of lands huh? <laughs> and to learn a lot which i did that's number one and what i found courage and anybody who is listening to me, if there was something called land, national land policy, this policy had not been implemented because it did not laws to operationalize the policy. So we had to come up with a raft of laws. And I'm very happy you have done that. Chief among them is the land in historical land injustices law i was very happy because when i came in there was a, of course we have we had all these commissions dongoland commissions i don't know what all manner of commissions but they are not been implemented they are not being implemented one because they were it was they were sensitive mm -hmm. those commissions they could have easily brought any government down anyway right yeah but if you follow the law i don't see the reason why people should be scared you are now the Kenyan ambassador to Belgium, Luxembourg, and the European Union. Tell us more about this role. It was very exciting for me to be made an ambassador. <laughs> to represent Kenyans and to the best of my ability. When you become an ambassador, it's very challenging. It's very challenging because, unlike being a minister, you have to be very versatile in terms of knowledge you are answerable about literally everything about your country on behalf of the president and the people of kenya yes. you understand yes whether it is ict matters whether it's land issues whether it's agricultural issues you are the it's like the expert <laughs> you are the reservoir so to speak of your nation yeah, you're the front man yeah therefore you must be able to read quickly be abreast with what is happening back home most of the time even not all the time so that you're rubbing shoulders on a daily level correct top european dignity yes yes now so when i went there i became an ambassador for two countries one is belgium the other one is what is called grand duchy of luxembourg this has 
I, it's a small country of 650,000 people mm -hmm. next to Belgium. Uh, Belgium has got approximately 11.5 million people. But the, the Luxembourg is extremely rich. Very rich, despite, Very yeah, despite, the, despite the size. You'll find that it's among the richest economies in the world. Wow. Yes, below 20. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's not a joke. You're the country's chief scout. Yeah. The scouting movement is designed to build an all-round person, right? Uh, how would you relate this role with the message in your book, Don't Hesitate? Yeah, you know, uh, when you become a scout, it's a pledge you make. Let me remind you. Are you a scout? <laughs> no. There is a phrase you say, on my honor, mm -hmm. I promise to do my best. Yeah. That's what you say. Mm -hmm. On my honor, I promise to do my best. Right. To, duty, to do duty to God and to my country. To serve people at all times. Not the word is at all times. Right. And to obey scout law. A scout is kind. Is courageous. <laughs> Are you? Uh, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Yes, yes, yes. So it relates to that because when you don't hesitate, it means when you see an opportunity to be associated with, to serve your countrymen and women, mm -hmm. grab it, run away with it. That way, we will see a transformed country. A bit about your family, your wife, and your yes, children. I'm coming you, to that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been very busy. But I realize you can easily forget the most important responsibility in your life. That is fatherhood and by extension motherhood. Motherhood. To me that is the most important. Because even after all your money is gone, or even after you have made so much money, finally, finally, what will make you a happy man or woman is how you relate with your children. I want to advise the fathers who are looking at, who are listening to me. Mm. Please take time, think about it very hard, and balance your life. Balancing your life means being available to your children when it matters. I'm married for the last 42 years oh. to one Stella Latirido, whom you saw today. Congratulations. God has blessed us with with the five children and six grandchildren wow so i'm a grandfather excellent yes yeah. and it's wonderful to be to be so lucky like that it is my grand it is my children and my wife who have been my tears they cheer me up they have given me support when i need it they're your support structure yes now you know you've had so many awards uh, just to mention a few on the 12th of december 2010 you were awarded order of the burning spear ebs by his excellency the president of kenya honorable mwai kibaki that was in 2010 mm. and still in recognition of your service to the nation um his excellency the president of kenya honorable uhuru kenyatta awarded you elder of the golden heart on 12th of December 2015. Let, let me mention about the ones. I think it's good to mention the awards. You know, when people recognize your services in Kureshi, your service delivery, you feel very happy. Mm -hmm. And I will start with a small one. When I was the Deputy Vice Chancellor, there was a Women University, uh, University of Nairobi Women Association, Oswa. And they recognize our trophy, which I was awarded for being a big brother. <laughs> it is one of the trophies you see there. Because I supported women students' course in the university. And they were okay. very happy. Up to this day. Then, at some point, because I'm sub Kenya Dental Association for two terms. One time the association collapsed and I re resuscitated the association. Okay. They thought and done the entire nation proud. And then when they were asked to nominate me for end of the burning spear, I was the first person to be nominated for that. And that's how I got it. And in fact, on the, uh, it was, I got that from uh, Francis uh, Modaura and Daktari on behalf of the state. Then at some point, 
There is something called Pian Futchard Academy mm -hmm. Award for the distinguished dental service globally. I got it. I got that award. And I want to receive it in Ghana, Accra. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Uh, you know, we've got tons of things that we could discuss and we could go for the next couple of hours. Yes. But let's leave, or rather save some for the next time. My parting shot. Yeah. Yes, okay. Your parting my Kenya, shot. My parting shot is that fellow Kenyans, wherever you are, I strongly believe that all of us have talents, however big, however small. And in the, in the course of your duties, you learn and maximize, you try to that talent. That world of knowledge, that world of experience, if you have an opportunity to share it, whether orally, whether in black and white, by way of writing books, so be it. That way, it will have an multiplier effect and it will impact other Kenyans very positively so that we have a great nation of men and women prepared to be described as achievers. Merry Christmas, happy, prosperous New Year, and God bless all of you. Thank you. The message to men, do not neglect your duties as a father as you pursue your career. To public servants, do not be tempted with money and a lifestyle that is against your values. Diligence and constant service to the community you live in and the public should not come at a personal cost to you and your family. The lessons from a world-renowned expert in periodontology, career public servant, and now ambassador to Belgium, Luxembourg, and the European Union. Ambassador Professor Jacob Kaimeni. Thank you for joining us on The Living Legends. I'm Fayaz.